everyone, it's Lisa from the blog FarmhouseOnBoon.com where I like to share all kinds of handmade things and today I want to help you out with maybe a little problem you've had, I don't know if you have, or maybe you will run into in the future. And that is what to do if you want to make a custom pillow cover that they don't sell the right size insert for at the fabric store or Walmart or Amazon, how to make a custom insert size. In my last video, I showed you how to make these super simple pillow covers from IKEA tea towels. Basically, you just fold a tea towel in half, add some ties, and boom, you're done. But since this isn't the most standard size pillow, what do you do about the insert? And then also, recently, I picked up this your vintage cement bag for $4.50 at my favorite little thrift shop in town. I love the color and the texture of the grain sack. But again, I don't think they sell this very odd shaped and sized pillow insert. So I wanna show you what I'm gonna do about that and what I did about that with my Ikea tea towel pillows. Now this will allow you to make any size pillow that you can think of or that you run into like a nice fabric for without having to worry about the insert size and then it's really quick to whip it up. So I'm gonna show you how to do that. So first, of course, you need to figure out the measurements. So I'm just going to measure the size of this grain sack. And then, depending on the color that you want, I like to use a thicker, more substantial fabric for my pillow inserts. So I would like to use a cotton or a canvas, maybe a duck. You wouldn't want to use something flimsy and lightweight or anything like that, obviously. One very great option is drop cloth, which I use for so many things. I will link below some other tutorials. I've shown how to make drop cloth slip covers, drop cloth curtains, drop cloth canvas tote, and definitely some others that I will think of and link below. But I actually took this drop cloth, and again, I have a tutorial for how to bleach it, but I bleached it to make it white because I like the contrast of this kind of off-white vintage green set color with the white, so I wanted to make this one white. And that's what I'm gonna use today. Of course, you could use a ticking stripe. You could even dye this to whatever color you need. I've dyed this gray before. You could use it in the original off-white color that it comes in, whatever you decide. So I'm first gonna, of course, measure the shape and size that I want, and then cut my drop cloth out to that size. Now, this bag, as you can see, has a funny shape here in the corner and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna remedy that in a future video but for now I'm going to measure it as if the pillow is going to go all the way from this longest point to the top and it measures right at 26 and a half and then the width here is 14 and a half so it's exactly 26 and a half by 14 and a half inches now since my grain sack here or should I say cement sack not really grain sack measured 26 and a half by 14 and a half. That isn't the exact size I'm gonna cut my insert because I want it to completely fill this out. I do not like when pillow covers are too big for the inserts. They just look floppy and just kind of sad. You want them full. And so I'm gonna need to allow for seam allowance where I'm gonna sew all the way around to attach my front and back of my pillow insert together is gonna be about a half inch all the way around. If I want the pillow insert to come just to the end, I'll wanna cut it 26 and a half inches plus one and that'll allow me to have a half inch on this side and a half inch on this side whenever I'm sewing it together. But if I want to stick out a little bit like I did in these pillows, I like them to kind of peekaboo out the outside. I want to add even another inch onto that to allow for that to happen. So you need to just know what you're going to be doing here. Always give yourself an extra inch on either side and then more if you want to peek out. I'm going to cut my pieces since it's 26 and a half by 14 and a half, 28 inches long. That will allow for a half inch of a peekaboo. So I'm adding one inch to get to 27 and a half inches for my seam allowance, then another half inch for the peekaboo. And then for the width of 14 and a half, I'm gonna cut it 15 and a half just so that it just fits inside. 
and isn't too small. I'm gonna cut those out now and then show you how I'm gonna put this together and stuff it and finish it all off. Now that I've cut my pieces out, I'm going to go ahead and sew all the way around, but I'm going to leave a little spot open so that I can turn this out and then stuff it. And then I will show you how to stuff it and then close up the spot that I left open. Now I like to leave the spot open on one of the short sides because this is gonna be the side that's gonna be poking out. So I want it to look real nice. And then I don't like to leave a spot open over the corner because it's much harder to close in. So the easiest place is just on the opposite end that will be shoved inside the pillow where no one will ever see. About, oh, four inches is nice to leave open. And then we'll close it up and it'll just be hidden inside the pillowcase. And of course, if you're gonna make a pillow cover that has no peekaboos or anything like that, it obviously hardly matters at all where you put it because nobody's ever gonna see any part of it. Now remember, since I gave myself an extra inch on either side, I'm going to use a half inch seam allowance, which usually is about the outside of the presser foot. At least that's how it is on my machine. It might be a little different on yours. Okay, I went ahead and sewed around, leaving open this little spot right here that I can now turn this out. You also may have noticed that I surged the outside edges and that is just to finish off the raw edges so that they don't fray and unravel. Now, if you don't have a serger, you can go ahead and use your zigzag stitch on your machine. Just use the tightest zigzag you have and that'll just make it nice and finished. You don't have to worry about things coming undone. So now I'm gonna turn this right sides out and if you have a lot of bulk, if your fabric's really thick, you might wanna trim the corners. I like to go ahead and book them out now, all four corners with my fingers. And now I'm just gonna go ahead and stuff it. And you can use just some stuffing from the store. I actually found this fake snow at the thrift shop for $2, but it's made of the exact same thing of like the polyester fiber fill from the store. So that works too, but I'm just gonna stuff this until it reaches desired fullness. I have it to my desired fullness at this point. Now I made sure to poke down into the corner oh. some stuffing. So just kind of take your finger and just push into the corner so that you're sure that it goes all the way down. Like I had it in this corner, but not this corner. So I'm just gonna poke some stuffing down into that corner like that. I also kind of took my hand through and found if there was any lumpy spots and then just kind of pulled the stuffing to a different area that didn't have as much fullness. So that way it would be more even. And then this is about where I am. Now this takes more stuffing than you expect a lot of times. So I had this, what is this? 24 ounce bag, which is a pretty good size of this Buffalo snow which I believe is for Christmas decorations, but anyways, it's basically polyester fiber fill stuffing. 
and I'd say I use almost half of the bag for this lumbar size pillow, this oblong pillow that I'm doing. So this is gonna end up going in my grain sack. But for now, I'm just showing you how to make it so you can make it for any size pillow that you make, even the Ikea tea towel pillow covers that I showed you last time. So now we're gonna go over to the machine and just top stitch this little area. I need to cut a few strings, but other than that, this is done. And now I have a custom size pillow out of very cheap drop cloth, which I bleached to make white and some stuffing. So super cheap, super easy to make. Thank you so much for watching this video and stopping by the farmhouse. Please be sure to hit that subscribe button for more food from scratch, our handmade home and our simple lifestyle here on Boone Street.